guys. So I've been doing a really big deep dive this year, learning as much as I possibly can about neuroplasticity, about brain training, about the autonomic nervous system, because the overwhelming majority of the people that I interview here on this channel who have had success with their recovery from conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, long COVID, have done so by addressing these components of their body and using these strategies to work to create new neural pathways in their brain and to work with their nervous system. And there have been major scientific advancements in our understanding in the last about 10 years with all of this. And unless you've been out there reading the latest medical journals or just really doing a ton of research yourself, you might not be aware of all of the new information that we have. And the kind of unfortunate, not kind of, definitely unfortunate reality is, is that for this information to make its way from the scientific community down to your doctor's office, there's different numbers floating around, but people say it takes somewhere around 17 to 20 years for that information to get to your doctor. Not every doctor, some will be on it sooner, but on average. So I am working hard to bring you as much information and as many strategies as I can here so you don't have to wait that long to get this. And it's actually pretty interesting, pretty impressive to see how us in this community are sharing information so quickly because even if that information isn't trickling down from those scientific papers and journals and so forth into our doctor's offices, more and more of us here are aware of it. And we see it in so many of the interviews that people are understanding this concept that at least for them, that the issues that they're facing, the symptoms that they're feeling in their body aren't actually coming from structural abnormalities in their body. Their tests are all coming back normal. Everything is showing that their body is fine. And when they trust this information and believe that their body is fine and that everything, including their brain and their nervous system is working fine, there's just a hypersensitive reaction happening to thoughts and emotions and things in our environment that is triggering these symptoms. And that we, when we work with our nervous system and work with our brain and create those new neural pathways and teach it how to respond to these things, that these symptoms become alleviated. And you know, many people are fully recovered as a result of this. Maybe not solely this, some people, this is all they need to address to recover from their symptoms. Other people find that this is a component of their recovery puzzle, but in so many cases the pe of at least the people that I am talking to is that um, this is a really important piece to address. In this video, I'm going to share with you a specific brain training strategy for you to consider trying if you think this is safe and a good fit for you. And this brain training strategy is meant for or is most effective when used when you are feeling some sort of symptom flare. So you are having at this moment, some sort of pain or maybe extreme fatigue, some post-exertional malaise, something is happening, something has flared up and your condition is feeling worse. This is a quick brain training activity. It's simple that you can pull out to do in those moments to help to minimize those symptoms and eventually over time, hopefully get rid of them altogether. And there are a couple of things that it's important to understand if you want to be successful with these sorts of strategies or a couple of components to the whole brain training process being effective. And the first one is just the education. It really needs to start with understanding what's happening and why it's happening and believing that this is the case. Because with this foundation, this allows you to then start doing the brain training activities and have the buy-in and know how and why they work. So at least in some cases with conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome or long COVID, what is happening is that the nervous system has gotten itself into a sort of hyper alert, hypersensitive state. It's essentially in a sort of overprotective setting, meaning it's producing for you increasingly intense symptoms and pain in your body in response to fairly normal stresses and stimuli in your environment. A major scientific advancement with this is that the brain and the nervous system can always be reprogrammed. The evidence to support this comes directly from brain imaging studies, which have shown alterations in brain structure. Our brains remain plastic throughout our lives. So even though changes have happened in the brain as symptoms become chronic, many of these changes can be reversed completely. So if you identify and resolve some of the factors that have sent your nervous system into a hypersensitive setting, you might be able to decrease how frequently and 
the severity of the response triggered by your nervous system. All right, so here is a brain training exercise that is a slightly adapted one from the app Curable. Now Curable, if you're not familiar with it, is an app that is completely evidence-based, so all based in science, and it's meant to address chronic pain because one of the big advancements in the last 10 years in the scientific community around pain is that all chronic pain is neurological in origin. So brain training and working with your nervous system can be incredibly effective in eliminating it altogether. And some of the people I've interviewed here on this channel have used the Curable app for their CFS or long COVID recovery because we're finding that it's not just pain, it's a lot of these symptoms that the brain is triggering. And there are a lot of neurological origins for this. So the same strategies that we're using for pain can work for conditions like uh, fatigue conditions as well. Now, this is not a sponsored video by Curable. I've been talking about it quite a bit lately because it's really an invaluable source of information around the nervous system and brain training. And they have all these brain training activities in there for you to try and you can star the ones you like and go back to them. It's just really accessible brain training information and strategies. And if you are interested in checking it out, I do have an affiliate link that I'll link in the video description. And with it, you'll get six weeks free of the app. So you can learn a lot uh, in six weeks. So for this brain training exercise I'm about to go through, I'm going to share with you how I do it and the visualization that works for me. The core structure of it pretty much, I think, needs to remain the same, but you can adapt it as you go to tweak the visualization for things that resonate more for you. And you can bookmark this video if you like, and the first couple of times you do it, you can play this video along with it. There's a timestamp right here, so you'll know exactly where to start it. And you'll find that it's not gonna take long for you to memorize it. It's very simple to do, and then you can just do it on your own whenever you need to. Okay. So let's go into this. You're going to pull out this brain training exercise if you think this is a good idea for you to do in times when those symptoms are flaring and you're working on minimizing those symptoms, hopefully eventually eliminating them. And in the process or how you're doing this is by teaching your brain and your nervous system that everything is okay. So to begin doing this brain training exercise, you're first going to either sit down or lie down, whatever is most comfortable for you. And you're going to close your eyes for the duration of the brain training exercise. And you're gonna start by just taking a few slow, deep breaths in through the nose, so, and then out through the mouth. And you're going to do a visualization. And in this visualization, you can imagine whatever is best for you. But what you are doing is visualizing that irrational, primitive, part of your brain that is assessing threat. When I imagine it, I immediately picture the sort of top left section of my brain. I don't know if this is actually where that threat assessment part of the brain lies. If you're watching and you know, let us know in the comments, but this is what I, what I picture. And when you picture this part of the brain, you can also give it a personality. You can have it be a person. You can make it a toddler, maybe a baby or younger version of yourself. Or you can just picture that area of the brain itself and perhaps it's lighting up or doing different things. Just try to tap into that part of your brain and you're going to attempt to try to calm it down. And because we're using this brain training exercise to work on reducing and eliminating symptoms that are currently flaring, while doing this brain training exercise, imagine that part of your brain, whatever you're envisioning in sort of a panicked and alarmed state. When I do this, I picture a caveman standing up there. I see an actual little caveman sort of standing on top of my brain. He's wearing a tiger print kind of loincloth. He's got a club in one hand. He's got messy kind of longish brown hair and for whatever reason, when he speaks, he has a French accent. I don't know why, but my little caveman speaks to me in a French accent. So for this reason, I've named him Pierre. So I'm gonna proceed walking you through this brain training exercise with caveman Pierre up there standing on that primitive threat assessment part of my brain. But moving forward, when you do this brain training exercise, you can envision whatever it is that you like. So I want you to picture Caveman Pierre up there having some sort of combination of a panic attack, 
and a temper tantrum. He's waving his arms with his club in his hand. He's stomping his feet. He's yelling. He's freaking out. He's like, what is going on? What is this? What is happening? Ah!" (laughs) This is my terrible French accent. I can't do a French accent, but I hear it when I do this activity in my brain. So you're going to picture Pierre having some sort of massive fear response to things going on around him. And what you're gonna do is start to gently try to calm him down. You can imagine yourself as a sort of like a parent to Pierre. And you can start by the same way you started this activity to get yourself in a more calm state is that you can start by doing some deep breathing with Pierre. You can come up to him and say, hey, let's just breathe for a minute and do that exact same breathing with him. And even imagine yourself moving your hands as you do it, do a deep breath in. And you can imagine that you're looking Pierre in the eye while you're doing this. And as he breathes with you, and you do this a few times, you see him start to calm down a little bit. And once his panic has dissipated, dissip- why I always struggle with this word, has come down a little bit and he's a bit more calm, then you can ask him, ask him what's wrong and just lay back well, during this brain training exercise, relax with your eyes closed and just quietly, patiently listen for his response. And he will always have a response and listen to what Pierre tells you without judgment, just with curiosity. And after you've listened to him, you've heard Pierre's response of why he's having this freak out attack, then you can again work to keep calming him down. You can say reassuring things to him like, look around, we're okay. There's nothing in our environment right now that's a stress. And you can imagine him sort of taking a minute, you know, looking around, like, oh, wait. I don't know how to speak French. I want to give you a response in French. Uh, but he will, you know, say, actually, this, everything is okay. You're right. <laughs> and you can even give him a hug. You can say, hey, you know, do you want to sit down? I bet you're tired. Like, you've been on overdrive for so long. Like, we're okay. There's no threats here. Do you want to just sit down and take a break? And you might picture him sitting down and just taking a little break and you can see his shoulders drop. He starts to relax, his breathing slowed down and just take a moment for the two of you to just sit and, you know, take in this moment that everything's okay. And then you can even ask him if he wants to lie down and he's probably going to say yes. You know, oui, je suis très fatigué. I would like to take a nap. And you can picture him laying down maybe in the grass under a tree and just closing his eyes and drifting off into a nice peaceful sleep and then just take a moment yourself to lay there still with your eyes closed and just watch Pierre be calm and asleep and completely unworried about any threats because now he is fully believing and aware that there are none. And if you like, you can pair this visualization with also picturing that part of your brain that is responsible for threat assessment. And maybe while Pierre has been having this panic attack, perhaps that part of the brain has been lighting up and firing as well. But as Pierre drifts off, drifts off into a nice peaceful sleep, that part of your brain calms down and returns to normal as well. And then from here, with your eyes still closed, you can just start to slowly come back to your environment. This might be wiggling your fingers a little bit, wiggling your toes. And then once you feel ready, you can open your eyes and go on with the rest of your day. So there you have it. There is one brain training exercise that you can have in your toolbox for when your symptoms start to flare. Now you don't need to do this every time your symptoms flare. Don't turn this into some sort of brain training boot camp. It's important to be patient with yourself, to be patient with the process. It takes time. It's not like flicking a switch in your brain. You are building new neural pathways in your brain, new sort of stimulus response, stimulus response, and it takes training to get that to happen. So you're going to have to do this 
um, quite a few times before you start getting those lasting results. And it's important just to be gentle in the process and start off slow. Just do what you can manage. And whatever you do, just congratulate yourself and appreciate yourself for the effort that you put in and be happy with it. And it's important to remember while doing this that Pierre is a good guy. He is on your side. He's working to protect you and keep you alive. But he's just one part of your brain, a primitive, at times irrational part of your brain that developed or evolved during a part of our human evolution to address a specific need that we had at that time. But as we know, our world that we live in now looks nothing like the one that we evolved to thrive in. So those assessments aren't always accurate and it's not always a perfect fit. It's often not for threat assessment in the world that we now live. And as he is just one piece of your brain, one of many pieces, one of who knows how many people we have living up there, and you, you watching this are your whole cognition. You're all of those pieces. You see everything. So Pierre alone can't run the show and you need to parent these parts of your brain a little bit and teach them and train them how to respond in these different situations. And if you're finding these videos helpful, valuable, I invite you to consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I now have channel memberships available on the channel. If you look below the video, there's a button that says join. And for $3 a month, you can support the channel and get perks and access to things that nobody else gets. It's about continuing to support our community, support this channel, make all the interviews, all the information that I put out sustainable long-term and continue to connect us and hopefully keep those information channels going and continue to keep working together. So if you do sus subscribe, if you do decide to join the channel, I very much thank you for the support. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm gonna link another one up here that is more of a deep dive on brain training, understanding how it works, why it works, and how you can be most successful with it. Thank you for watching. Whatever you're facing, keep at it. I believe you have totally got this. I know some days it doesn't feel like that, and that's okay. Even on the days that you don't believe it, I believe it for you and you will get back there. So thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this video and I hope to see you in this next one.